In today's video, we are going to discuss about multi-factor authentication and the different ways to enable multi-factor authentication in Microsoft 365. Before moving to anything else, let's discuss about what is MFA. Multi-factor authentication requires user to provide two or more authentication factors. Something you know, which is your password, something you have, it can be your phone or token, it can be your OTP or anything, something you are, your biometric. So, in MFA, it will ask you to provide one, two or more authentications. And when we come to a Microsoft 365 environment, we can enable MFA uh, mainly in three different forms. These three are the main, main ways how you can enable multi-factor authentication. The first one is through admin center. This is for specific uses. In your organization, all uses doesn't require multi-factor authentication. It, doesn't, it required only for very few uses. So, specifically, you want to enable multi-factor authentication, then you can go with the first option, admin center. When it comes to the second one, security default, this is a second way of enabling multi-factor authentication. Um, this will enable MFA for all the uses. So, it has got a lot of limitations. One by one, we will see it out. And the last one is nothing but conditional access. This is more flexible and targeted control. So, let's start from the first one, admin sender. I will be discussing all the three ways and its pros and cons. All right, let's start with admin sender for specific uses. All right, I am in the Microsoft 365 admin sender. Let's see how you can, uh, now let us see how we can enable uh, MFA for specific uses through admin sender. All right, I am in the admin sender, Microsoft 365 admin sender. Let's select the active uses here. Once we select the active uses, here you have the option, you have the tab here. On the top, you have the tab for multi-factor authentication. Let's click on that. This will take you to the different page, land over here. And here you could see all the uses. And the status of MFA you could see here, it is disabled for almost all the uses. And for one user, it is enforced. So we have three status here. One is disabled. One is enabled, the other one is enforced. Let's select any of the user. I am selecting uh, the user Ali. So let me select him. Once if we select, we have the option to enable MFA. So I am going to enable it. So enabling multi-factor authentication. So for Ali, it is enabled. If you refresh the page, you could see that. Yeah, you could see it is enabled. So, uh, in the status, you could see three type of status here, like enforce, disable, and enable. Let us understand the difference of all the three. You can select any user specifically, and you can enable MFA here. So, this is the first method, admin center for specific uses. Now, as I told you, we let us discuss about the different status here, like enforce, disabled, and enabled. I have taken a uh, created a table for that. First of all, disabled. The first status is disabled. You could see the status disabled here, which means MFA is turned off for the user. The user can log in with this only with their password. No MFA prompt at all. That is disabled means. Enable means MFA is enabled but not yet enforced. The user will be asked to register for MFA on their next login. So, he will get uh, nearly 14 days to enable MFA. Till then, he can skip it. So, it is just enabled but not enforced. So, and the last one is enforced. Enforced is nothing but you can log in only through MFA. You will not be get an option to skip the MFA. So, in the, in the in Microsoft 365 environment, once if you enable MFA, it will allow you to log in without MFA for 14 days. The 15th day, if you want to log in, you will have to provide the MFA details. Otherwise, you won't be able, without giving MFA, you won't be able to log into Microsoft 365 environment. All right. So, that is all about for specific uses, MFA enabling for the specific uses through admin center. Now, let us discuss the second way of enabling 
MFA, which is, which is through security defaults. This is for all uses. We will discuss the advantage and disadvantage of this. But before that, let us see how we can do this. To do that, we have to be in the Microsoft Enra Admin Center. You can get into Enra Admin Center from here. Uh, identity, if you click on this identity, it will uh, take you to the Enra Admin Center. Here, under identity, you get an option like overview. Click on overview. That will take you overview, monitoring and properties, recommendations, setup guides. Let me click on properties. Here, under properties, if you come down, you have the option of security defaults. Security defaults are the basic identity security mechanism recommended by Microsoft. So, if you click on manage security defaults, it will ask you to enable it. You, here, you have the option to enable it. Once if you enable this, what happens for the all uses, MFA will be enforced, will be enabled. Users will not be able to log into the Microsoft 365 environment without MFA. So here you can enable MFA for all the uses. So this is a second option, MFA for all uses through security defaults. Now let us discuss the pros and cons of security defaults. When security defaults are enabled in Microsoft 365, they apply globally to everyone in the organization, including both admins and non-admin uses. This means all users will be required to use multi-factor authentication and other security measures defined by the security defaults. Advantage is that simplicity. It is easy way to quickly secure your entire organization without needing to configure complex policies. That is one of the advantage of enabling security defaults. Without doing a much uh, difficult task, very easily you can secure your organization. And it applies to all uses, ensuring uniform protection across your organization. That is one other advantage. It applies to all the uses. But the disadvantage is that you cannot customize the policy. There will be some uses who doesn't require MFA. For example, or the meeting rooms or some service accounts. So that may not require uh, MFA. In such cases, once if we enable security default here, you do not get an option to customize it. If you enable it, it, it get enabled to all. There is no option to customize for some particular group or a particular user or for some particular application. You do not get such options. So that is the disadvantage of security defaults for all users. When you enable security defaults and apply to all the users. All right. So we have discussed the second one, security defaults. Now we move to the third one, conditional access policy. This is the recommended way of enabling MFA. I don't recommend to enable MFA for the specific uses or for the all uses, the recommended way is do it through conditional access. Here, what happens? You get more flexibility, and you can you can have a targeted control for some particular user or particular group. You can enable it, or you can enable it to all uses and exclude some uses. So that kind of uh, flexibility you get it in conditional access. Let us see how we can do that. Uh, as you know, conditional access is available in the Azure portal. Even in the Microsoft Enra Admin Center, you get the conditional access. Or from the Intune portal, you get the conditional access. Wherever you do, the same settings are same. The same uh, features are available. It is integrated each other. If you do it from the Admin portal, from the Enra Admin Center, or from the Azure uh, portal, or from the Intune Admin Center, you see the same settings everywhere and it is integrated each other. The same conditional access you see everywhere. So I am doing from the Android admin center here under protection. You have the conditional access. Or if you go to the Intune admin center, you can even access the con uh, conditional access from the Intune admin center also. Here under devices, you have the conditional access. This also will take you to the same page that uh, Microsoft Android admin center exhibit it shows to you all right so i'm doing from the android admin center let me click on condition access and here under policies 
let me create a new policy and I name it as MFA for all uses for MFA for the organization. All right. Here you have the option to uh, assign this to particular user or particular group and and if you click it, click on the uses, you have the option to include and exclude. For example, you can apply to all uses and exclude some particular group. So you can create a, a, a exclusion group like MFA exclusion group. And uh, when some somebody is asking uh, some user, uh, if you somebody is asking to disable MFA for him, then you can add that member to that MFA exclusion group. Then automatically this policy will be excluded for him. So this is the this is more flexible, and uh, you can customize the MFA. All right. So and target resources you uh, you can select the resources, or you can select all resources. If you want to exclude somebody, you have the option to exclude it. Network also the same thing. You have uh, it. It is providing you more customized way to enable it. Enable the MFA. Any network, any location, or you can allow trusted network or location you can exclude something if required so all that possibilities are here so i apply for any network or location and apply for all resources and all the uses and under access control you have to select the grant option here require multi-factor authentication and you can select it turn it on and create it so this way you can create the conditional access policy it is giving a warning as my i have applied to all uses it is giving a warning that don't lock yourselves okay so i have excluded my my id here so don't do for all all uses and all you apply for all uses and if you are applying for all uses exclude that particular exclusion group that is the best way of creating conditional access policy for MFA. All right. So hope I am clear here. So these are the three ways of creating MFA, enabling MFA for your organization. One through the specific, specific uses, one for all uses, the other one through conditional access for a uh, more flexible way of enabling uh, MFA. Before I conclude, I would like to say that YouTube has providing a new feature like uh, audio track. Now almost, now all my new videos, uh, my uh, YouTube itself is converting my videos to 10 different languages. You could see it is in English, which is original, which is my, uh, the, which I am delivering right now. And you have the uh, option to uh, listen my video in the language, uh, in French language, in German, Hindi. Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Portuguese, and Spanish. If you are comfortable with Hindi, you can convert my video to Hindi language. You can listen my video in the Hindi language. I'll just play this for your. In today's video, we will see that the iOS or Android device for the web sim can be blocked by or Microsoft service application for Intune company. In the same way, you can listen uh, the video in Indonesian, Italian, uh, French, German. Portuguese, Spanish, so whatever language is comfortable to you, you can convert it and listen Listen this. Uh, YouTube has given this feature recently. Uh, this is applied to almost all my latest videos. That's it. Thanks for watching my video. If you like the video, please do subscribe and support me. If you have any questions or suggestions, please mark it in the comment section. Uh, I shall revert to that. All right. Thank you. Goodbye.